we got Al back here. We're going to be uh, finishing up his DBXL today. Uh, we got some more goodies too. Al picked up an MSD wire, some fuel lines, gasket. He brought my uh, TGN air filter. Finally came in right. Finally got the spring for the. Got the spring for the for his victory pipe, and now we're mixing fuel. Now, uh, don't pay attention to this 14 to 1 LST XXL2. We're gonna be <coughs> mixing fuel. We got some uh, 100 octane Cam 2 here, ethanol free, most important of all. Um, we got a uh, Al's little. It's the Little, future of nitro and gas right there. My future nitro and gas brother right there. And um, here we go. <clears throat> All right, mixture. I did a, a mix fuel, how I mix my fuel once before, but I want to just point something out. I like to use one of these. They're a gallon and a quarter. I only do gallon mixes at a time. Uh, reason why I like to have more space is because I got to shake it around. Um, all right, and I love this uh, no spill. I mean, it's it's nice. It's really neat, especially for uh, the new generation. That's uh, you know uh, w w wimpy hands. This would be good for for, for, you, for the wimpy hand guys. But uh, even if even if you got hands like us, you, th this will be. Um, you don't want to dirty your hands for no reason with with fuel. But anyway. <clears throat> I got a ratio cup. This is a, ra a ratio right cup. Right? You can get these anywhere, any motorcycle store, dirt bike store, whatever. Um, uh, DDM sells these as well. You're going to go to your gallons. All right, look for the gallons. You got all these measurements here 2.5, 2.0, 1.5, 1.0. 1 1.0 means one gallon. Then you work your way down. Now, <clears throat> When we break, when, when when I break in brand new motors, only when I break in brand new motors, I mix my fuel, my mixture, 24 to 1, all right? That's 24 ounces to 1 gallon, all right? So you look for that. You come all the way down, and you look for 24 to 1, all right? Sorry, I'm still using my old shitty phone. And I'm going to be using it for a little bit longer. I have not uh, started to use my wife's old uh, 6 Plus phone yet. Um, anyway, uh, now you, you go there, mark it if you want. So you, if, if you think you're going to forget, mark it. All right? 24 to 1 is how I mix my break-in gallon. The first gallon on brand new engines. All right, after that... Say you're 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 you went through a whole gallon of 24 to one. Your motor is now been broken in. You've been running it. You've been having fun with it. All that. Now, from there on, you do not mix 24 to one anymore. Do not, please, do not. That's actually too much oil. All right, it's not good if you're gonna be banging it around, full throttle it constantly with that much oil. Afterwards. After we break in our new motors and we have over a gallon, I'm going to do another freaking uh, how to mix my fuel again, all right? But uh, let me just tell you now. After the whole gallon of 24 to 1 is broken in, to one. 28 to 1 is what you want to run afterwards, all right? I don't do 25 to 1 like uh, RTR motors say. I, we do 28 to 1. I, it's forever. Race or no race, bash. Yeah, that's what we what we do. Uh, a bunch of us we've been doing. I have a six-year-old OBR motor for a reason. Uh, but twenty-eight to one, you get the best performance, more power, and uh, Thank you. It, it, they never overheat. All right, uh, you could always overheat a motor, but it depends how lean you are. But trust me, compared to twenty-five to one and twenty-four to one, they run much cooler at twenty-eight. But anyway, so this is how we do it. Okay. First off, we're going to run the best oil, I think, uh, that you can get. Uh, this was the shit for two-stroke uh, race engines that run on Cam 2. Um, eth uh, th this guys that were running pure ethanol fuel. Um, race fuel, special fuels. They run in 
they're mixing with this on their race two-stroke motors like high-performance Banshees uh, 250R three-wheelers um, anything high-performance out of the ordinary they're gonna be running this heavy-duty shit that's um, actually supposedly from um, my buddy in California he dynoed his Banshee he actually gained performance by using this and also uh, a guy in Alaska that races snowmobiles two strokes uh, high performance two stroke motors runs this as well anyway uh, this is what I'm gonna be running uh, from now on I usually don't use this to break in engines but I'm just gonna use it from day one and stay with it to break in motors I like to use a, a, a crappier uh, two stroke oil for the but I'm gonna be doing a full gallon I'm not gonna be doing a half a tank or, or one tank of fuel I'm gonna be doing a full gallon at 24 to 1 so Al and I First video ever of me showing this is what we're doing right here. Right? You mix it. 24 to 1. Okay. Alright. Um, I also like to do just a splash of this. Alright? Star charm. Alright? Definitely, this is a must to, to use if you're using regular pump gas. Especially nowadays with the ethanol, it's a must. If you're running ethanol fuel, please use this, man. If you're running that. But anyway, uh, I really don't need it with this ethanol free, but I put it anyway. Um, dump your oil. Right, you're gonna notice. I, I'm, I'm trying to be quick, so I'm gonna dump some fuel in here, stir it around, because there's plenty of oil here. You want to make sure you get all the, every oil, every every drop out. All right. See, so yeah, I just added some, some gas here, some fuel. Just stirring it up. it up now the good thing about this gallon because it's one and a quarter gallon shake her up baby shake her plenty of nice food. all right we're down here now we're gonna do some work the car's off the the stand for now and uh one of my buddies that's uh subscribed to me and wanted me to make a video on the next time I do one of these. And here we go. OBR motors kinda yeah. I just removed the pipe that I had on there already. I put the oh I know also I put a 21 tooth pinion. I put the 20 back on the stock 23. And now I'm gonna remove the the OBR cover once again. And I'll show you guys over here. Alright. Alright, we got the cover off. Get this uh wire out, pull this out. And let me take this guy off too. Alright. So alright. Alright, we got her off. Um you see some more writings here from OBR. Read 334 cc. That's what it says here. Read 34 cc from OBR. Okay. Luke, are you listening? Now, to remove this, you got to lift this sucker up a little bit. All right, and start unscrewing. All right, this sucker is on pretty snug, so I'm going to get my pick here. We're going to shove her in here and loosen it up. All right, you just want to loosen loosen that up off a little your, off your coil See that then you can lift her up all 
once you have this off, then you can unscrew. You're gonna grab the wire, unscrew it like if it's a uh, like if it's screwed. All right, put it over there. All right. Um, this thing was such a pain in the butt to remove. It's unbelievable. They freaking JB welded the damn thing, the wire to here. Real pain he has to gotta get out. Um, you know it's brand new, so it's they had it really screwed in tight, and uh, there was also JB weld that was glued on and very tight. You, most people may have a hard time, real hard time with this, or even damage their coil. So if you have a new motor, wait a while, bro. Or 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 if you can afford to uh, break one and buy another coil, go ahead and try it but my old OBR motor that I did my wire onto and you know was used it was heated cold down heated cold so that that all uh, reacted to the glue weakening so it was way more easier than this so I mean look at all this crap this is all the shit that I had to pick out you know I had to use a bunch of picks Different angles and to get this crap out, man. Look at this. So anyway, now it's time for the new one. All right, we're gonna screw the new one in. Well, I'm gonna also put a dab of uh, crazy glue here, and we have to look. I may have to even seal this up, and then we're also gonna put a uh, heat shrink uh, wrap at the end. All right. Once you get your uh, new MSD wire out of that bag, you know, you, you could actually adjust your wire to whatever size you want, but uh, just leave it the way it is if you guys can't do that, uh, if you're not comfortable doing that, All right? So, then anyway, you grab this, grab the insulation, you fold it back, and now you're going to use this guy here. You're going to align it. You're gonna see see that core. You're gonna have to put that that core as best as you can centered to that screw. All right. When you're gonna center it, you're gonna have to even twist the motor if you can to look at it, center it, and start screwing it. It's gonna be a bitch in the beginning, but you're gonna start twisting it. You're gonna it might take a couple of turns constantly. And then you'll feel it to start going in and in and in. And put pressure. It's gonna be a little bit of a bitch. But it's very important to get that centered. Start screwing itself in and go all the way in. Not none of this half ass shit. You're gonna have to go all the way in, alright? And another thing. Very important, super important. Before you go through all that work, and all of a sudden you're done, right? But you forgot something. Believe me, you do not want to turn the, sh reverse it, and remove it. Do not forget to install your heat shrink wrap in here first. Install it onto your wire. Just move it up, slide it up, and then after it's screwed in, you can adjust it down to where you got where it has to go. I'm going to show you. Don't forget to put this on first. All right. All right. Here, here's just a quick vid. I wasn't going to stop and do, film this, but uh, I think it's a must. Do not forget your heat shrink uh, wrap. All right. This is how. Just put it over and have it ready. Screw it. And then you can adjust this later on. All right. Another thing I want to point out. See this core? If you want to help yourself out a little bit, get a pick. And just prick that in. We'll go right in the center as possible. And just pop that sucker in a little bit, all right? Pull it out and then start, start screwing. All right, check it out, guys. I'm very happy how this came out. All right, got her nice and snug. Now, you guys should really use a, um, a little heat gun or a lighter. And you're gonna have to melt this now, all right? Most of you guys know what a heat shrink wrap uh, uh, is and how to do this, but some of you guys may not. 
Um, do not do what I'm about to do. All right, I'm using, that's the only lighter. I quit smoking, so I got no more lighters on me or, or Zippos or none of that shit. But I do carry my mop gas with me. Anyway, I'm just going to give her some heat. Let's take a look at this closely. You're going to start seeing it melt, all right? This is what happens when, when this sucker gets heated. Alright, see that? Moving around, melting. Don't overdo it because then it gets. You could crack it. Yep. That nail set we used last time. Oh, I, got, I got it over there. Hold on. Nice. Look at that. Nice and hot. Damn, this sucker's hot. All right. All right. That's how. That's how we do it. All right. Um, I'm gonna be doing more of these. So the next one I'll do, I'll do another video. Just, uh, just in case. It should be easier. I wanted this done. This is what we do. Right, another thing that I really, I always do. Um, after you have this sucker installed and everything's on good, heat shrinked, I do electrical tape. Right, nice and snug. Over here is the, the, the real tough part to do it. You, you know, you're gonna have to cut little pieces about yay big, inch and a quarter. And try to snug slider down in that groove. There's a groove here that you can go behind and just keep doing. I did about three layers of that. Then once I got that started, I just started going around with electrical tape. And then from there, I just go around and around and around till up here. When you put this on, it'll be here. Perfect. See that? All right. This is what it's supposed to look like afterwards. We're not done yet. Now, I usually take off about a quarter inch, three eighths inch off this boot here. Reason why is this is a real true MSD wire. It's not really meant to be going on freaking little weed whacker spark plugs or chainsaw spark plugs. This is meant to go on car spark plugs all right if you grab your stock uh spark plug boot you'll see the difference here see the difference all right you can cut all this shit off but i'm not going to i'm gonna just cut off a little bit off just in case in the future i do go with a longer um you know there's different i use ngk's sometimes i'll use the platinum iridiums or, or the ngk sevens but if you use a champion or another or like an e3 you could you could use a longer boot but i'm gonna cut this i'll show you guys so we can use it on any spark plug i'm not going to be running uh zip tie wires here I, I need this spark plug boot to snug in any spark plug you know with no issues i don't want to be running my shit and all of a sudden the boot comes off uh, during a hill climb but Right. I like to take about quarter inch, three eighths. Try to go even. Take about this much off. Sucker ain't coming out for nothing. If you have to, you can trim more. It'll tell you. It'll tell you. All right. Hope that was helpful. And this is how you put an MSD wire on a little motor like this. All right. We're also going to be changing the fuel lines real quick. We just got this out. Be careful, you guys don't rip this. Unless you have extras.
So throw some, just peel it up, throw some oil in there and twist it. Get it nice, and once it's nice and uh, twisty, then pop her out. Um, this side, this fuel line, just in case uh, you guys, we, we get a, a lost. This side is the one that, the longer one, that, that goes to the fuel filter. I'm going to pop this sucker out. There you go. There's the fuel filter. Let's pop a new fuel filter. And... Alright, I just got the skid plates back on. Go ahead. Oh, bring it down. 